Okay, is everybody there? I might turn the mic off again. I don't want to choke in the mic. It just doesn't sound good. So you'll just have to bear with me. For those of you that just signed in, I'm getting over some kind of cold or sinus infection here. So if you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, or Skype. So we're going to talk about how you can earn a living trading, whether that's 100 grand a year, 200 grand a year, a half a million dollars a year, whatever it takes for you to pay your bills or less than that. When you decide that you want to trade, I do think it's extremely important to know the purpose of why you are trading. Is it to supplement another job that you have? Is it part-time income? Is it full-time income? Is it for retirement? Are you just trying to save up to buy something like a home or a car? Because it will have a lot to do with your long range outlook on this process and also your risk per trade. And even though we might have goals in mind how much we want to risk per trade, sometimes we make more, sometimes we lose in trades. And we're gonna go over that today too. But you have to at least have an objective. And I definitely think, again, that helps you with the focus. So I always tell people to try to break it down. How much do you need to make on average a day in order to make 200 grand a year? So it's on average about $1,000 a day. So we had a good solid day today in the day trading room. We went long the market, the SPY. And if I have time, I can pull that up. But we didn't have any good gaps yesterday. It was a slow week. So you take, okay, one day, no trades. Next day, it's about $1,500 in profit today. So you say, all right, well, we're averaging $1,500 in two days. That's pretty much on pace, okay? Because tomorrow could be an even bigger day. And so this is how you have to look at it. Now, if you have a small account, you may only be wanting to risk $100, $150 a day. But if you're doing this part time and we have a small account, even something like 39 grand a year is real money. And some people, that's all they make in the entire year. And they work full time, okay, when you think about it, especially like even minimum wage workers. The amount of time that we spend trading really isn't that long. I think I closed the trading room down today, like at 10.05 or something. It was really early. We were in and out of the trade pretty quick. So it doesn't take a long time to trade. You're not trading for eight, 10 hours. Markets only open from 9.30 to four. And again, the training room's really only open until 10.30 to 11, but I may close it early if we're in and out of something quick. So I always tell people, chunk it out. You're going to set your goals. You look to stay focused. You chunk it out. And if it helps you look at it per the month, per week, then do it that way, okay? to stay focused. That'll also help you not get so caught up if you have a day where you don't trade, like we had yesterday, or a day where you have a loss. It's not the end of the world. You will have certain days where you take a trade and it doesn't work and you have a loss. And that's part of trading. That's part of accepting what this is. And again, if anybody has any questions, you can write them in the room, okay? So if you're doing this for a career, you have to figure out how am I gonna get there? Again, everybody wants the money, that's the goal, but what's the thought process of to get to the money? It really has to be in balance. You really have to be in balance when you're thinking about it. And that's why I'm very focused each morning when I trade at a, on a set strategy, okay? The other benefit of trading if you're doing this for a living is you can do it from home. Now, if you're doing this and you have another job, then you can have the other job and you can work maybe from your office, okay, if they let you, get on the computer, whatever, get on the internet. I don't suggest um, being on the go too much, you know, but if you have good Wi-Fi, <coughs> excuse me, you can watch it, but you gotta have, make sure that you have a solid Wi-Fi if you're in your computer, like in a Wi-Fi connection. But the nice thing about trading is you can do it from anywhere in the world. And that is really one of the biggest benefits to trading the market, to day trading the market as your career. You could go on vacation and take your computer with you. You also can take off if you want. You don't have to trade Fridays. You could say, well, I'm gonna trade every Monday through Thursday. 
or Tuesday through Friday. You can set your own schedule. There, I just saw somebody else sign in, Kathy, if you need to help people that are coming in late. Anyways, it only takes a few hours a week. When you're deciding to do this, if you want to learn my method, I'm only day trading in the morning. I'm day trading just in that open, open period. And the US stock market opens at 9.30 a.m. So I'm focusing the first half an hour to the first hour of the day. Now, we do do options. If you sign up for the options newsletter, those trades could be at any point in the day, but most of them are actually in the morning as well, just so you know. And we'll talk about that too. So how can you earn $200,000 a year trading? Focusing on one strategy. It's the being specific. You, you say, I'm going in this direction and that's it, meaning I'm only going to focus on one particular thing. While there is many, many day trading strategies out there and long-term strategies out there, I really don't think it's, an, it's, it's a function of doing all of them. It is very, very important to get good at one thing and it really helps you then to have something that I call conviction. Conviction helps you trade. It allows you to put size on in a trade and then do really well, okay? And how do you get to that point where you have to get good at one thing? So it has to do with the focus. So for me, I focus on momentum. Actually, uh, Amazon, <coughs> I'll pull that chart up in a minute. I didn't put this in this, but Amazon has is having a nice, beautiful bullish move up. And I have a lot of conviction in that right now. Now this was Adobe back here, when was this? Late June. Stock closed here, gap up. This was an earnings, rallied had a secondary gap here, had another rally here, took the stock over 300. So this was a bullish move. So in this case here, it was an earnings gap and the momentum moved the stock higher, okay? You see that there. So that was a nice move and I called options calls in that for the Adobe. You see this here. Um, and here it is again. So my focus is on the gaps, the gaps in Adobe, because again, that's what I focus on gaps. So I'm focusing on gaps, I'm focusing on momentum, and I'm focusing on that for the purpose of what? To make money. Focus counts. Lots of times people, they start trading, and then they do one thing, and then they do another thing, and another thing, and another thing, and they never really stick with one thing. And they may be trading more years than I am, but they're not good, and they're not making money because they flip-flopped around, doing too many different things. That is very dangerous. Also, the only person that ever makes money with that is who? The broker, because you're paying commissions every time you're in and out of multiple trades. So one individual can trade the market successfully as a career with a dependable method. And that's what I have. And that's what I, that's what, that's my go-to. That's my focus, okay? In order to reap the rewards that the market has to offer, you need a quality system to follow. The central structure to trading results must be a strategy with a solid foundation that is based on accurately reading price action. The other powerful factor in being consistently profitable is having an edge. Now, we're going to talk today about some shorts. Shorting gives traders an edge, particularly because many people don't know how to do it. Now, we dig along the market today, but I usually do look for shorts first. In the case today, though, there really wasn't any good shorts. So if I don't see any good shorts, <coughs> then I will look for the longs, okay? That's usually what I do in the room. Anyways, many traders don't know how to focus on one strategy or won't. They are always in fear of missing out mode. And it's actually the opposite because you're not missing out on anything. Actually, even if you're not in a trade, you're not making money, but you're not losing. Okay. You're really missing out when you miss the total bigger picture of how you're going to get somewhere with this trading. This idea of trying to get somewhere very fast with no time, no energy, no effort, and no money is totally ridiculous. So that's what a lot of people think. They think they're gonna take $500 and make a million literally in a year or a month or whatever, some ridiculous amount of time that is absurd. So people have to get real with themselves. What does it take to be successful? It doesn't have to be work that's not fun. 
if you enjoy training and the work even to get good at it is fun, okay? And although people don't like necessarily spending money, whether it's on risk or a class like mine, it is exciting in a sense that you're moving yourself forward and improving the quality of your thoughts and your method. And again, it's like you're, you're making the foundation, you're making the foundation stronger and you're making yourself stronger personally and you're making yourself, yourself smarter by getting the education in order to be good, which is extremely, extremely important. A lot of people just don't get that. Now we'll talk today about momentum. Momentum can happen very quickly. Market's a good example of that today. Momentum came into the market whew, really quick. Quick and moved it up, okay? So that's good. That makes for quality, quality day trades. And again, like I was saying earlier, you have to become an expert, an expert of what you're seeing and doing. So for me, I look at a 26 point rating system to determine the direction that a stock is going to go to go long or short. <clears throat> so I use a checklist. This checklist, I rank gaps every day in the morning. Some days I rate two or three things. Some days I rate 10. I rate, may rate more. If it's earnings season, which starts next week, there may be 30 things in the morning I rate. <clears throat> it really depends, because I really never know until I get up in the morning. <clears throat> and Galahad, I see you here tonight. If there's anything tonight you want me to look at, I will certainly look at anything tonight here. If there's anything uh, gapping tonight. But the philosophy behind the 26 points for me is I'm looking to find a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. I'm looking for big moves on the day. I'm looking for early confirmation of my bias and the move, and usually between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. And I'm looking for precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. So any questions here so far? So what I'm looking for really in my method is to look for selling to go, to go after something like Baidu, which is falling. Now this was back from the end of May into June. Stock closed here like around 150 and change. Open in the morning around 130, gapped down, boom, and it was a short. So this fell. So you could have bought a put or you could have shorted it, followed through, boom. So from this number here around 150, within like two weeks, stock was where? Broke 110. You see that here. That's a very nice downward move. You would have had to be short or bought a put to make money. BYND was institutional buying. Stock closed here, gapped up, rallied. This area here is around 100, opened at 130, flew up to 185, and eventually I don't have that piece of the chart on here. It was at 200. So the stock literally went 200, I mean 100 points. It went from 100 to 200 in a matter of two weeks. That is what? Institutional buying. You only have an institution that can move a stock like that. Plus you have traders. But again, as individual traders, how do we make money? We play on this, we play with these institutional moves. It makes it very easy to make money when you're in with a big, big player because they're the ones that are buying it, gapping it up overnight, and then moving it and following it through, which you saw here in the BYND. Any questions here so far? So think about what I've been saying here. Accuracy, precision, details. Accuracy counts in trading on all fronts, no matter what you're doing. You need a quality strategy. So many people trade and they don't have a strategy at all, which is crazy to me, but it's true. And then they wonder why they're losing. They're losing because they don't have a strategy. You also need a good risk to reward, a minimum of one to one. So if you're risking a thousand, your goal is to make a thousand. You need to have the right entry. I teach this in the class, correct size and proper exit. I think, I literally think that we could not have gotten a better exit on the market today. We literally almost got out of the market today and along this morning at the high of the day. That does not happen all the time, but today, great read on the market, great exit. So you have to watch. And if you're in the room, I call the exits. So being successful in the market takes detail and it takes a certain level of precision and detail matters. It can make a difference in you making a lot of money one day or losing one day. So you have to learn what to do and you have to learn what to do, and you have to learn when to do it, 
and you have to be on board, okay? So when you come and you wanna learn from me, I'm, I'm helping you to train your own eye to see things in the same way that I see things because I see things ahead of time. I don't see where the gap's gonna happen. I see the gap and then I see where it's gonna go after the gap has occurred on the live day because we only trade on the live, live day, okay? Now this was a call again back from the end of May. And again, I like the shorts. So this was Facebook. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, closed here, gap down, fell. So this is Facebook. Facebook fell off a planet here. Beautiful move. Again, whether you did a put in it or whether you did a day trade short in it. That was the Facebook. But again, you see if you went long here on this 50 pair move and average, you would have lost because Facebook tanked here, at least for that short term period. And again, when you're trading, when you're trading and you're, and you're looking to get in stuff, again, we're not Warren Buffett here. We're not like long-term investors. And even the options I'm calling are out for a week or a couple of days or two weeks. It doesn't even mean, mean you need to hold them for that whole period, okay? Any questions so far? So focus on where the momentum is. Focus, focus, focus. So let's talk about a day trade here. This was back. Again, we went long today, but this was a short. Again, I preferred to short. It was CCL, stock closed here, gap down, open, dropped. We shorted the tail. This is a daily chart. So I rate the gap in the daily chart, and here's the one minute. So we trade it on the one minute. Stock closed here, gap down, open, drop, boom. We shorted it, got the drop. This is what I look for every day. Literally, we could be in and out of the trade in two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. This is what we do, okay, every day. Boom, boom, boom. So that was it. So this was one where the gap rated 23 points. It rated pretty well. Entry 46.90, shares 4,000, risk was an advance, trader risk 2,400, exit 46.15, profit 3,000. Very nice move. I'm going to go back and show you this here again. Take it, get out. Short it, boom. Okay. And again, if you're in the live trading room, I'm calling this. I'm calling the entry, I'm calling the stop, I'm calling the exit, just like we did today in the market, okay? Any questions, just write them in the room here. So as far as the time of day, again, I've got to see that set up by 10, 10 a.m. at the latest. And really, if I don't see anything and it's getting close to 10, I'm probably not doing anything in the day. Institutions tend to make their moves fast 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 in fact you see that the market in fact let me pull the market up here since i'm just talking about this time of the day because i just want to see exactly where the high of the day was for the market if you can just hang on here one second where is let me just go here i'm gonna pull up the one minute And then we did have this pop. Well, that was two o'clock. Let me just see here where we were. This is a spy. This is what we did today in the trading room. No, look at that. Beautiful. So we literally, we went long in here, the market today. Some people got out in here, which was fine. It was profit. We, but if you followed me today, you held it longer. This is a be we literally get out of this by the day day. We couldn't have had a better exit if we tried. Um, I think that was the high of the day, 299.66, and it was beautiful move. Gala had quick put in here BBBY. I'll look at it if it's up. This is earnings. Uh, Dave is asking an example: 4,000 shares of 46. How large of account do you need? It depends if you have a profit account or a retail account. If you have a retail account, your margin is four to one. That's it. If you have a proprietary day trading account, your margin will vary. It may be 10 to one, it may be 20 to one. So you can do the math. So let's just say, for example, if you had an account, you take $46 times 4,000. I'll tell you what you needed for both. That's 184,000 in BP you would have needed. If you had a retail account, you would have needed 46 grand. If you had a prop account, you would have needed 18,400.
Got it? David F. But by all means, you don't have to risk 4,000 shares of that. You didn't have to do that. This is, this is if you're trading for a while, if you have a big account, if you've done the class, if you know what you're doing. You could risk $200 and it would have been a profitable trade. Do you see what I'm saying? You don't have to take a big risk in order to use my system. Your risk should be in accordance with the size of your account. And David, let me know that you understand that answer to your question. You can use whatever platform you want. That's totally up to you. And this BBY is absolutely bupkis. I'll look at the other things really quickly here that Galahad had put. Uh, that's nothing. This is nothing. This is something. So we're gonna we're gonna look at this tomorrow. This is something to watch. Now, I don't know where this opens, but this is definitely worth looking at. Oh, at least we have we have something decent to look at tomorrow. Well, that's good news. All right, let me get back. So if you want a referral for a broker, you can email me, but I'm not a broker. They will be more specific of the questions. It depends what type you have. Some people start out with prop accounts and move into retail accounts. Some people just don't do the day trades at all. They end up doing options because you don't need any margin with options. So then it has nothing to do with the cost of the stock. It's the cost of the contract. And we will talk about one options trade as well. Uh, if you want a trial to the open house this week, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Okay, I can send you that when we are finished here this evening. Anyways, is it about is it about the time of day, time of day, time of day, time of day, focus, precision, time of day, and again, good exit on that spy trade today, time of day. Now this was another one here. This is CAG back from end of June. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. And you see this big red bar. So this is what you want to do. This is, these are the good ones, okay? This is nice. You could have done a couple trades in this. And we only did one, but you could have done a couple. And, and that's nice. And the earnings season starts next week, and we're going to get a lot of, a lot of good plays in earnings season. I think it's going to be an extremely volatile time to trade in the month of July and August, okay? And the market will add to that. And the things that are happening in the world is going to add to that too, which adds to the volatility in the market. Now here was CAG, CAG closed here, gap down, open, dropped, boom. Push back again, fell. So again, you short it, get out, take it, boom. Do you see here what the price is? I'm taking it over, 27.20. See this in here? This is more than a buck, boom, and that's it. And literally, just look at the time of the day, 9.30, this is 9.50. <coughs> this is all you need. You don't have to sit and agonize and blah, 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 and look at everything and watch the market and get all crazy. All you have to do is this. Do, boom, boom, boom. Take it, get out. Do, do. But you have to get this in the right direction because obviously if you went long this, you lost. This is not a long. This was a short. How do I know? Look, this is the bar. Do. Okay. And again, I'm calling these trades in the live room. This was a, this was a 22 point rating. Okay. Entry 2688, shares 3,000, exit 2617. Again, this is just the morning move, 2,130. You do not have to take 3,000 shares. You can take 500 shares. You can take 600 shares. You can take 1,500 shares, whatever. If you took 1,500 shares, you still made over 1,000 bucks in this. It's what you can afford, which is your cash account and the amount of margin that you have as well, okay? Any questions here so far besides the one I asked today? So how, how do I predict where things are going to go? Okay, because I rate the gap. I rate the gap using my checklist and I do it in the pre-market and like that price smart, I could rate that tonight. Now I'm not going to because it's late and I'm tired. <clears throat> I like to get up fresh. I'm an early morning person, so that's why trading in the Eastern time zone works for me. I get up early, I look at the market, it's my process, I'll check and see what's gapping, I'll rate stuff, I'll have my breakfast, I'll have coffee, I'll see what's happening in the world, and that's what I do. So I like to do it in the morning, but you could rate PriceSmart tonight, theoretically, because it's really gapping 
down tonight, okay? So it's a three-step process for me. And again, get yourself in, a, in, a, in, a, in an organized pattern. I get up in the morning. I rate the gap predicting the correct directional bias. It rates 20 points or more per my 26-point rating system. That's it. And then two, I take the trade as an option or equity trade. That's it. And then three, I book the money into the momentum move. That's it. Okay. And if the trade stops out, then we take a loss because I do use stops. The stops are there as the insurance. They're there to protect myself. Okay. So I want to make sure that I don't lose an endless amount of money in a trade. That's how you have consistency as well. There's nothing you can do when a trade stops. Sometimes the trades just don't work. And also, and I'm going to say this here, and I don't want to get too off, off um, track from this, tonight's discussion, <clears throat> but the longer you trade, the better you get. You'll handle losses better when they come. I know you're saying, well, well, that shouldn't be. You know, you, you, the better you get, you should have no losses. No, there's no one out there, even if they're great at what they do, which I am, that doesn't ever have a loss. There are times when things don't work, and I call it the gray area. If you look at the market as black and white, you're really going to struggle to ever be successful in any consistent manner. And I'm talking consistently over weeks and months and years. You must accept the fact that sometimes you have to kill a trade or you have to take a stop and a trade doesn't work and you have to accept the loss. You will be better off in the end and you will become stronger through the process by understanding that. And, and if you have a, a type A personality like I do, it will actually help you proceed in a, in a stronger direction to make more money. I don't know if that makes any sense, but does everybody get what I'm trying to say there? Many times what happens with traders is they take losses or they take a loss and they get weak and they lose more and they get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and poorer. I'm kind of like the opposite. If something doesn't work out for me, I try to analyze it, see if there's something that I missed. Sometimes there isn't, it just didn't work. And then I tend to come back stronger and make more money. It's very interesting. So I'm telling you through the process of understanding trading, if this is something you really wanna do and really wanna do good at and really wanna make a lot of money doing, then listen to what I'm saying, okay? Because most people, what happens is they take losses and they get weak and weak and weak and weak. Okay? Losses teach you something. They teach you to get strong and toughen up. Accept it as part of trading because it's a gray area. Because you're never not going to have any losses. And you must kill trades sometimes when they don't work, which is basically taking a stop because we use stops. And evaluate if you did anything wrong. And sometimes you don't. It just didn't work. But it's all part of what you're doing of this process to get better and stronger and eventually make more money because you go with the ones that are working. Um, on your trades, you call out, what percent of your trades would say are successful over long periods? I don't know what you mean by long periods. Day trades, as far as day trades, we're doing we're in and out in a couple minutes. So that's not a long period to me. Options trades aren't long periods to me either because we're doing them out for a week or two weeks. So. I'm not calling any long-term swing trades. So I don't know what you mean by long-term periods. My average win ratio for all of my, my program itself, which is the golden gap, whether you're doing it as options or equity trades is 80%. But I don't know what you mean by long-term period. I'm not calling, well, I, I shouldn't say that. I, there's two trades that I've called out long for, um, for the options letter. And actually, I could resend those to the people on the letter now because it's still not too late to even take those, even though I called them a couple months ago. Uh, but that, that is so rare that I don't want to. I don't want people to assume that I'm calling trades out like so long out. But I did this year because I because I just did because the cost of them was so dirt cheap, and and they're all up. And it's actually not even too late to do them. Um, average win ratio is around eighty percent. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's a little bit less. Again, it depends on what's happening how busy we are, how many trades we're doing. 
we're getting into an active period here in the month of July and August, even though you say, well, it's the summer doldrums, it's not for people that do gaps. So for me particularly, it's a busy time because you have earnings. Now, this was a, this is a really nice call. I think some people got out of this too early, but this continued. Uh, you could still be in this, but I think really the exit was the other day. Uh, this was the BA puts 362.50, is expiring 712, I call it June 27th. So here's the BA chart. So here's the 27th, stock close to your gap down. You could have done this as a short, as a day trade on this day here, and it could have went just boom, taken it, or you could have bought the put. And again, there's the drop, okay? So cost was not cheap in this, but it wasn't crazy. 550, 12 contracts, risk was 6,600. I did an ad in this because I really, really liked it. 24 contracts, average pricing was 625, exit 1280, profit 15,720. You still could be in this trade, it would be positive actually. Um, I don't know if anybody is though. I really don't know if anybody is, but this would you would still be up in this trade. This was a really, really, really nice move. And BA even looks, in fact, let's pull up BA right now while we have this on. I just want to see, um, I just want to see here if this is down tonight. Uh, Galahad, I think you're talking about the 350s. You're talking about the 350s, aren't you? So low here was 351.25. tonight so we'll see what this does tomorrow I only think this could be lower tomorrow this closed extremely weak today gapped up today with the market fell today in the day even though the market rallied falling here a little bit tonight yeah I'm talking about the 362 50s in this in this webinar Galahad the 350s I mean you're, you're just waiting them out here there's nothing to do the 350s could go tomorrow I just, I just think this is lower. The 362.50s Galahad, I don't know if you did them or not, but they were, they would still be profitable if you're in them. So if you're talking about 350s, yeah, you gotta, you gotta wait until that drops. Any other questions from anybody else? So far. So anyways, like that BA, back from the 27th in June, I rate the gap. And then I look at it, and then that's how I'm determining what to do. And BA has earnings, I think, July 24th. So today is the, what is today? Today's the 10th. So it has two more weeks. Two more weeks to the BA earnings. So we'll see. We'll see what happens if it drops through that 350 number, or if I'm gonna wanna do anything else with that until after the earnings, since they are two weeks away, they're not that far out. But that was a nice play for the 362.50s, and I think it still falls tomorrow. We'll see if it gets through and beyond that 350 number. But that is how I determine to call these trades, whether it's a day trade or it's an option. And I do look at it for the cost of that. For, for something someone was asking about margin earlier, it made sense. Although you could have day traded BA back on the 27th. Yes, you could have. It made sense to do that as an option if you wanted to take the size in that and hold it to get that bigger move. Okay, because that dropped, you know, $10 plus. So how many gaps per week? During each quarterly earnings season, three to five quality gaps or more. Usually I'm looking for per day. Doesn't mean I'm doing them all. I might do one, okay? And then not earnings season, it might be three to five a week, okay? Because it's really just a function of how many gaps we're getting. You get more in earnings season, and that's something that I just can't control. You have to wait. You have to see the gaps. I don't know until I get up in the morning. Now we looked at the the one uh, tonight, the Pet Smart um, or the Price Smart. That may end up continuing down tomorrow. We have to rate it in the morning. But right now, earnings season, like I said, doesn't start till next week. But a quality gap is one that rates high enough to trade based on the rating system. So my plan is to try to get in and out of tra trades quickly, 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 quickly. And that's why we we're out of the spy early this morning. And you have to like know what you're doing. Again, if you're if you want to hold stuff the options are better. If you're in and out for the quick money, then the day trades are better. Just figure out what you wanna do, what are your goals, how much money can you afford to risk, and again, you should be looking to turn it over at least once, okay? And, and good trades can go three, but then you gotta be willing to hold them. Now, Amazon, 
looks really, really strong. That was one I called as well today. And that one is a call, and that one has some big targets in it. But you gotta be willing to hold it. And you gotta be willing to hold the trade. And so this is this is where you have to decide like where you're at. And I tell people, listen, if you have small accounts, you might wanna get out quicker to book money in chunks because you wanna build it. If you have a small account like $2,000 and a 2,500 and you wanna build it. So on average though, you need to be risking $1,000 per trade to hit these kinds of numbers, but you can certainly risk 2,000. Um, that was the example earlier in the CCL. And either way, you have to look at your cash size of the account to determine your risk. Um, I call out the day trades in the trading room, entry, stops and targets and just say get out but the options is a separate service the options is a newsletter we do not review options in the trading room that's a separate service that you will have to sign up for it's a newsletter that you manage the trades themselves but i do call the exact strike um here this is what the options newsletter looks like it's right here but you have to manage the trades yourself you have to take the exit yourself everybody is doing them differently to be honest with you I have a whole wide range of people in this letter now. Some people get up when they're up anything at all. Some people don't let the trades play out. They kill them if they're down 50%. Some people lay, let them play out. Some people hold them. It, it's just completely based on what works for you for this letter. So there's the money management for the options letter is on you, and that has nothing to do with the trading room, but there's no prerequisites for the letter. The prerequisite for the trading room, if you want to join, to get the live calls in the room, which are not options calls, they're day trades, you must do the class, okay? Uh, where was I here? Anyways, I, I, I do like to short a lot. So we might be shorting the one to, tonight that Galahad mentioned, we'll, we'll see. But anyways, it's all based on my system, it's called the Golden Gap System. The Golden Gap System is a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using the checklist. I've been doing this for more than 10 years and I, I, I rate gaps that I do. I don't, I don't do anything I don't rate. Um, yeah, the day trades then, then you can do the trial this week if you want, but you must sign up for the class in order to join the room. So the Golden Gap course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day to get good risk to reward trades. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. The course teaches a more proficient way to read support and resistance in the right direction. And the course teaches you to focus on one strategy in a detailed manner so you can become a good trader. And I think that that's the important part. And as I was saying about that earlier, if you want to get serious about this, you got to get good. And so many people are so wishy-washy, wishy-washy about their strategy, their trades, their risk, all of it, and their commitment. Their commitment level isn't there. So my commitment level was my commitment level with this when I started was full on from day one and has never wavered. And that's one of the reasons that I'm successful. I just never wavered off that commitment level. But that's kind of my personality as well. Like I don't do something to half ass it. Like I can't be bothered if I don't want to do it. So I mean, you kind of have to take that approach to it if you want to be successful. But, but if, you, if you do, you really can do well. The money is there in the market to be made. I'm telling you people. And there's so much volume of volatility going on this year. You may not know it, but there is. You're just not playing the right things. So the Golden Gap rating system is a 26 point checklist. So what am I looking for? I'm really analyzing a large time frame, which is a daily chart to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders, and then to make entry decisions and exit decisions on a time on a small time frame with a one minute chart, because that's where I'm calling the trains in the morning. And then I, that's the focus for me, the high degree of accuracy. And then using the daily chart to make the decisions for the stock pick allows for accuracy in the direction. And using the one minute chart allows for good risk reward trades with accuracy too. Any questions here so far? Success in the market is about skill, not luck. To be a successful trader, it is not about luck. It is a skill-based career. You have to be good. I mean, it's just as simple as that. It's not like going to McDonald's, you know? It's, this is like you have to actually show up and be present. All highly paid careers are skill-based. Physicians, musicians, attorneys, you need to have the right skills and knowledge in order to succeed. The interesting thing about training is that people either, one, don't realize how important the right knowledge and skill set is before they risk money in a trade. I think that's the case a lot. 
or two, they think they have the right knowledge, but they really don't. That's true as well. A lot of people think they know how to trade and they're not making money. That's It's kind of dumb when you think about it. It's like, okay, if you're losing, why would you think you know how to trade? You don't. Because if you do, you'd be winning. Now, I get this question a lot. Is the class beginner advanced? You, you're learning my system. So it's all new for anyone. If you've traded for 35 years, my system is new to you. You don't know it. Okay, it's going to be new. If you've never traded before, my system is new to you. It's new. So either way, you're going to have to learn what I know, and that's the reality. So whether you find my information easy or hard, I don't know, and you won't know either until you do the class. I will say that I'm here if you have questions. Obviously, joining the room is a support system after the class as well. You will get it. I will help you get it. I will do my best. You can feel free to pick up the phone and call me and ask me questions too. I mean, you have to start up the ladder on the right path if you're doing this. Otherwise, how are you ever going to become successful? Staying on the wrong path, like I was saying earlier, if you're doing something where you're losing money, that just doesn't make any sense. At some point, you have to say, you know what? This path isn't working and I'm going to get in a different path. And it's about change and you have to be willing to change. It's not about failure. You can, If you quit doing a strategy, you're losing money. If you're down money in the year in the market from 2019, it, you're, not, you're not saying, well, you failed if you're quitting and doing something else and you have to pay for a class like mine to do it, which you do. It means that you're getting on a new path and that's something exciting that's positive. You're making a change that's good for yourself. It doesn't mean that you're failing. It doesn't mean it's something that you have to look at negative. You have to look at it positive. Changing paths sometimes in life can be extremely positive and it can be empowering for you. Too many people stay on the wrong path for too long because they're afraid to, to say to themselves that it's time to change or get on a different path or they feel like then they fail. And not everybody just wakes up in the, out of the blue and all of a sudden learns how to trade and knows how to do it successfully. That's just not realistic. You may take many paths. You may take many paths until you meet up with me and you just have to be honest with yourself. And it is important to have a positive mindset. A lot of people have very negative mindsets once they're losing the market and I get that. I get it, I totally get it. But it's not gonna help you in the long run. Being positive and having a positive outlook is gonna serve you. It's, you need more than that. But I mean, definitely, definitely it helps, okay? I only usually call out one trade a day. I might call out two. But if I call out two, it's for a darn good reason. Two amazing gaps or we lost in the first trade and we call a second trade. Most days, one. One, 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 one is what my focus is and what I'm attempting to do every day with success. I don't trade all day. Again, that doesn't serve you either. Anyways, it's about resetting sometimes and move forward. Sometimes you just got to do it. It, it. It's like, it's like uh, doing a cleanse. I know it's summer. A lot of people say, well, do a cleanse in the spring, but you know, or in the fall, change the seasons. But hey, you know, you can do a cleanse now. You can cleanse yourself of all your bad habits with trading, uh, just like you go on a food cleanse and you do it. You just do it. I mean, you got to reset yourself to move forward. You got to change your mindset if it's been negative into positive. You got to you got to just get honest with yourself, and you got to be willing to move forward. It it has a lot to do with having the right attitude. It has a lot to do with your dedication to your own success. It has a lot to do with your own personal commitment to this. It will cost you money. You're not going to learn what I know without paying me for my information, which is in the class, and that's the reality of the situation. It's like saying that you're going to make you know, 13 grand in the market in a trade without risking any money or without only risking a dollar. I had a conversation with a guy last week and it's somebody that I've had multiple conversations with and he was going on and on and on and on and on and on and on about this concept of taking $500 and turning it into a million. I just had to shut it down with him immediately. I was fully, full on honest with him and say, no, you can not do that. Stop thinking like that. As soon as you accept the reality that you are not going to be able to do that, that that's not going to happen for you, then you'll do better. If you have $2,000 to trade with, you're not going to turn that into a million dollars in a year. I hate to tell you. I hate to burst your bubble. That's not reality. Could you take a $2,000 account and build that $2,000 account to $4,000? Then take that $4,000 account and build it to $8,000. Then take that $8,000 count and build it to 16,000 within several months of time trading well. Yes, that's realistic. So when, when, you, when you get down to reality, when you become grounded, then you're gonna start to make some real progress, okay? 
All these crazy things that people think are not helping you. It's not helping your emotions. It's not helping your mindset, okay? And all of the above. So think like a successful person that wants to not only be successful, but maintain that level of success. It's not just about having one big trade. You wanna have lots of good trades, lots of positive trades, not just the one big one. You wanna have lots of good ones. Doesn't mean you're never gonna have any losers. You are gonna have some trades that lose, but you're gonna manage them accordingly per your risk, okay? And thinking positive is important. And I say, don't let anything stand in your way of your success. If you're busy, you're gonna to have to make time. If you're busy, you will have to make time to do the class. It's on a weekend. It's nine to five Eastern time. The class is July 20th to 21st. You gotta block out a weekend to do it. It's time away in a summer weekend if you wanna learn how to do it, but it is well worth it. You do the class, you learn it, and then you've got it down. Yes, you have to do the Golden Gap class to have access to the trading room. You can do the trial this week for the open house, um, but you must do the class to join the room. Yes, these trades set up very quickly and everyone in the room is a student. Any other questions here? Again, your goals, think about them as reasonable, chunking it out. So empower yourself today. The Golden Gap course is a complete system to use to trade. Again, the class is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. So the next class is July 20th and 21st, 9 to 5. Cost of the class is $59.99. If you're interested in signing up, you must email me for the forms at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Now, I am doing a Christmas in July offer. I've been watching Hallmark Christmas movies all month, which is hilarious, but I've been sick. And I found them on TV, and it's put me in a Christmassy mood. And as everyone's doing it. I found like three different Christmas movies last night. Even the Food Network was doing like a bake-off the other night. They were making Christmas cookies. I was rolling. Um, so I'm going to do it too. So I'm doing Christmas in July. Um, if you sign up for the class in July, by July 19th, you will receive the trading room and options that are free to the end of the year. This is a great deal. So you get all my trade calls, both options and day trades, access to the trading room until the end of the year, free and the letter. But you've got to pay for the class. The normal class price is $59.99 anyways. And you email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to sign up. I do the class once a month, AJ. Okay. But this uh, Christmas in July offer ends July 19th for the room and letter free. Any questions about anything so far from anyone at all? How's everyone doing? Made it through with my voice. I'm getting better. I feel better. I just don't sound better. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? If you want access to the open house, email me. I'll send you the link. I sound better, Kathy. Terrific. Let's try to have a good, uh, good end of the week here. Good solid day today, Wednesday. We got Thursday. We got Friday. A slow week, but solid so far. So we'll see what we get the next two days. And um, and we'll go from there. Open house is Thursday and Friday, correct. And Kathy's putting in, I guess the link takes you right there. Kathy, did you take the password out, off? For the room? Okay. If you have questions, you can email me here at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. Okay. Next week, remember, is a big week. Mueller's testifying. Earnings season starts. There's going to be a lot of volatility. Okay. We'll see what happens. We'll be watching BA tomorrow and Amazon. Those are the two top picks right now. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Email me if you have any questions. Thank you, Kathy. You know, I usually get up on my soapbox, but not for many. And I will get up on my soapbox. <laughs>
today. And I will say that Alyssa has been my customer for a very long time. And her customers have been my customers for a very long time. Nine years. And I do know she's out there changing lives. And when she says that she will help you get it, she means she will help you get it. She really, she parts with a lot of her personal time to train students, tutor students, Skype sessions, hot com sessions, you name it. She'll be very flexible to work with. So, and she's got a very busy life with a television schedule and everything, but she makes time for every single person to take that class. And, and some people just get it from being in the room. So, yeah. In any event, that's all I have to say about that. I do appreciate you all spending your time here. We know that time is that commodity you're not trading out there. There's too few little bits of minutes, and if they can add two more weekends in a week, that would make me happy. They all have a great night ahead. Good day trading tomorrow. I love you.